Okay, today, this is gonna be a fun one. We're gonna set up to TIG weld some stainless steel welding exercises. And we're gonna compare the differences between a gas lens setup and a diffuser setup. We're gonna use the exact same settings for each one. We're gonna see which one takes the cup as the winner. And even though there's gonna be some differences here, I think you're gonna be surprised at the results that we get. Let's get going here. Okay, the first thing I guess we could go over is what is the difference between the two setups? Both of them obviously deliver gas to the welding area, but what is the difference between the two setups and the results that they get? Let's compare them side by side here. You can see obviously there are differences between the two of them. They both look a little bit different from one another. Obviously with different torches, there will be different configurations that you can use. The biggest difference in my opinion is with the diffuser setup. You can see with my 9 to 20 style torch, the diffuser is much smaller than the 17 or 26 style torch. You might hear this commonly referred to as a stubby setup. Now working with a 17 or 26 style torch, you can see the difference between these ones here. Again, the gas lens that I will use for this one will be a stubby setup. In these exercises here, I'm going to be using the 9 or 20 style torch. So this will be the differences between my two setups here. This is gonna be the cup selection I'm using for each one as well. The diffuser setup that I have access to will max out at a number six size cup, but with the gas lens, I have a much wider selection of cups that I can use. The cup that I will be using will be this edge welding cup here. These ones are sweet. The main difference between these two parts here, which are commonly referred to as the collet body, essentially is gonna be the delivery of the gas. The amount of gas coming out of each one is going to be exactly the same. However, you can see the delivery method is what the main difference is. Looking at the diffuser setup here first, we can see these small gas ports here on the side. Or if you want to be funny about them, we can call them gas holes. <laughs> this is going to supply the gas out of the torch, and the cup is what is going to funnel and direct this gas into the welding area. Now, taking a look at the gas lens setup here, we can essentially see that this has a gas screen instead of the gas ports. No big old gas holes. Now the main advantage to TIG welding using a gas lens, in my opinion, is the gas screen is going to help smooth out the gas supply and make welding much more stable and the gas supply more consistent. Like I mentioned, the actual volume of gas going through it is gonna be exactly the same, but the main difference is that the screen is gonna to help to stabilize this gas supply and make it more manageable to work with, in my opinion. Stainless steel is gonna require a more consistent and stable supply of gas to cover the welding area. If you're familiar with this look here, this gray stuff is an oxide. This is what we wanna prevent by having a proper coverage of gas. And you can see from this photo that I stole from the internet here, essentially this kind of shows the difference with the gas stabilization between the two setups. Pretty cool, eh? So now that we know a little bit more about why the gas setups are different and why apparently one might be a little more advantageous to welding stainless steel, advantageous advantageous you can see here with my machine i am using the new everlast typhoon 230 and these are going to be the settings that i use for these exercises here and i'm going to be using the foot pedal to dictate how much of this amperage i am using for each joint i'm using approximately one millimeter or approximately 1 16th of an inch stainless steel coupons and we are going to be doing a few different joint configurations to test out the differences between each one Okay, to get going here, let's just run a couple flat passes and compare the differences at this stage here. This is essentially what I start all of my students with in my online TIG welding program. Okay, getting set up with the gas lens here first. Obviously, I am pretty comfortable working with this setup. After a proper start at the beginning, the filler material stabilizes and sits down really nicely. One of the most annoying things to TIG welding with stainless steel is the puddle typically wobbles around a lot. It's super annoying. You can see this one is stabilized really nicely after the start here. As I'm moving along, the filler material is blending into the base plate properly, controlling my heat and profile as I move. This one is relatively easy to keep control of. Now, as I finish, I'm gonna completely post flow the area. I really wanna make sure this area is completely covered with gas until it has finished glowing red hot. In between the two passes, the one most important thing I'm gonna make sure I do is let the plate cool down completely. Okay, now let's switch over to the diffuser setup. And it was actually at this point, I actually got the idea to reconfigure the setup to my working area here. You can see here, I have this fume removal system from remove the fume. This thing is amazing. However, because there is a difference in the overall gas control between these two setups here, I wanna make sure that I make everything consistent as far as any variables that might typically mess with either of these setups. 
So I've actually done tests with this system to see how much it actually pulls gas away from my welding area. To be honest, it's actually very little. But just to be sure, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it away from my welding area a little further. I'm gonna make sure I'm welding my welding respirator as well as getting fresh air into my shop here. Now that we're set up and I'm happy with the circumstances that I'm gonna practice with, let's get going. Okay, right away as I arc up, the one thing that I notice is this does not stabilize nearly as well as the gas lens setup. The filler material is still blending in okay, but it's a little wobbly to start. I'm just gonna give it a little extra time for everything to sit down and blend into the base material. Once the details of my heat and filler material are really close to what I did with the gas lens setup, I'm gonna start moving. And as I'm moving, all of the details that I did with the previous one are gonna be very similar. Honestly, the biggest detail with either one of these setups is going to be with the post flow. As you can see, after I finish, I completely cover the welding area with gas. I really wanna make sure this area is completely covered with gas until it has finished glowing red hot. Okay, now that we're done, let's compare the differences. Okay, looking at the two here, you can definitely see there's a bit of a difference in the overall finish of the welding areas. The area done with the gas lens definitely has a more consistent shine to it, whereas the one done with the diffuser definitely looks a little more dull and cloudy. We don't see the finish looking as shiny as we do with the gas lens setup. But the area that probably is the most important that we really wanna take the time to break down and here it really catches my eye, this is gonna be the heat affected zone. We can see with the gas lens set up, the heat affected zone is much more consistent. It is more narrow to the welding area, much more controlled. Whereas the diffuser setup has allowed a little more oxide to form. And this is why the heat affected zone looks a little bit bigger. And again, with a little more dull of a finish and a little more oxide that is formed. So comparing these two side by side, we definitely can see some differences that we can break down at this stage here. But also as far as the category of the welding performance and what I am feeling as I am welding, using a gas lens setup definitely provides a little bit more stability as I am welding. And it was a lot easier to keep control of all the variables as I was welding along with that pass. Okay, let's jump into the next one here. This one's a little bit more challenging. This is gonna be the fillet joint. And again, this one has some differences that I don't think you're gonna actually really expect. Okay, again, getting set up, we're gonna start with our gas lens. Now, getting started with this one, the starts are an absolute treat with the gas lens. Everything stabilizes really well at the start. The filler material does not have any problems with wobbling or instability. And the filler material is blending in really nicely with the base material. As I'm moving along, I'm just maintaining my stepping distance and my profile as I'm moving and I'm actually going to extinguish this one right in the center. Again, a really thorough and proper post flow. Now again, I'm gonna let this one cool completely and I'm gonna switch to my diffuser setup. I'm gonna get set up and I'm gonna start with this one at the other end and I'm gonna direct it towards the center connecting the two passes. Now, something really funny happens as I arc up with this one. The crazy thing about this one is that with this joint, it actually welds super nice and the stabilization of everything is really good as I start moving as well. Do you wanna know the difference with this one? Let's stop and take a look at this diagram right here. We can see before when we were working on a flat plate, essentially the welding surface or the included angle that I am welding is 180 degrees. Taking a look at working with a fillet joint here, this cuts the angle in half. Essentially our included angle is now 90 degrees. Okay, jumping back into the welding here. Having a tighter included angle keeps the gas from flowing away. And having the gas stabilized in the joint and contained a little more is actually gonna help us to keep a smoother welding profile with better stability. Okay, now finishing up here with a proper post flow. You're gonna be surprised at this one. Let's take a look at the differences. And you can actually see both sides of this one look pretty good. You can see the main difference is that the heat control is a little more consistent with the gas lens. And you can see this reflected in the heat affected zones. You can see that the diffuser has a little bit more of a pronounced heat affected zone with a little bit more oxide formed, but the overall control and profile of this one is much more consistent due to the joint configuration. It's kind of crazy how the actual configuration of this joint changed a lot of the variables and helped us out with stability a little bit with this one. So it gets kind of interesting at this point, hey? Okay, this next one's interesting. Let's get started out with the outside corner joint. Okay, to be honest, with either of these setups, I find this one to be a little bit tricky either way. We'll get into that in a second. And there is a difference why. Let's get into the welding here first. Now, after I get set up with a few seconds of patience at the start with my gas lens set up, I can stabilize this one no problem. 
However, when I'm starting to move along, I have to be very careful with the amount of filler material that I am using here. Now, simply because the material that I'm using is a little bit thinner with this one, this one can overfill very quickly. The amount of filler material in relation to the amount of heat I am using is very important for this exercise. Now that everything is stabilized and looking good, I'm gonna run along, I'm gonna maintain the details as I am traveling. And again, a good post flow, and I'm gonna allow this one to cool off completely. Okay, now, switching to my diffuser setup. Right away getting going with this one, it is all over the place. The stabilization is nothing like what I experienced doing with the fillet joint. Keeping control of this one, I basically just had to do the best I can. Okay, we're gonna stop here. We're gonna take a look at this diagram here. You see where we had a tighter included angle with the fillet joint. This had helped to control our gas and keep it somewhat local to the welding area. Taking a look at the outside corner joint here, we can see the configuration has a much different included angle. Our heat is going to be darting around with very little control and our gas coverage is going to suffer drastically as well because it will be easily swept away from the welding area. Again, with using a gas lens setup, this is gonna to help to cover the welding area with a more consistent amount of gas, but using a diffuser setup definitely does not give me anywhere near the stability that I got with my gas lens. Like I said, even working with my gas lens setup, getting this one to stabilize is a little bit more precarious with the outside corner joint. Honestly, getting this one to run smoothly with the diffuser setup with what I had to work with here in this demonstration was a huge pain in the gas hole. <laughs> Just made that up. Now, after running a few joints here, especially the fillet joints, we can actually see that we can indeed get some great looking stuff using a diffuser. Especially with running something like the fillet joint, this is gonna offer much better control and stabilization with your arc. However, just having a more consistent and stabilized volume of gas using these cups here, this is genuinely something that just makes life a lot easier with welding stainless steel. Now, there are a ton of people who use diffuser setups for TIG welding stainless steel. You'll find tons of examples out there. And I will fully admit that after making some adjustments with your gas volume in relation to what exercise you are doing, different material, different machines, etc., you can make some adjustments for different types of cups that you can get to work with a diffuser, and you absolutely can get some great results. But I do have to say that for most projects I do in this shop, as well as the basic variables that we stuck to for these examples in the demonstration here today, I'm personally just gonna find that I'm gonna get way better and more stable results using a gas lens setup. What kind of setup do you use in your torch? Let me know in the comments below. I actually really like seeing what everybody uses out there. And again, this demonstration here today is not meant to throw shade at one setup or the other. I'm not picking sides. I just wanna see what the differences are using identical settings and seeing what happens and comparing the differences between the two different setups. Do some experimentation for yourself. Try each one out. Try each setup with different gas volume as well as different cup sizes if you can. Part of learning to weld is the fun that you can have experimenting with different variables and seeing what happens. Now, I have a free TIG welding class that you can take online for stainless steel. This can be done at your own convenience. You just register online and then take part in the class whenever works for you. Go check that class out. It's completely free. Do a random act of kindness for a stranger today. My name is Dusty James. Phil and chill. We will talk soon. Peace.